So who talks first? You talk first? I talk first? I talk first. I always talk first. Good morning, Vietnam! My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. The numbers all go to 11. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! I got a bad feeling about this. 1.21 gigawatts! Shut the fuck up, Donnie! You can't handle the truth! To be or not to be? Not to be. Hello everyone, this is the first podcast of the year. This is the Film Meets Podcast, powered by Indian Nerve. Uh, today we have a very small crew. With Anir joining in from Delhi and Abhishek from Bangalore and we'll be going over the movies that we're most excited for. So Abhishek, say hi. What's up everyone and I hope everyone had a had an amazing uh, 2016 and I hope that you guys at least cinematically will have a great 2017 as well. How's everyone else doing? Hey Anir, Happy New Year. Happy New Year brothers. It was a good New Year. I spent most of it in Bangalore but I came back to Delhi just in time for the New Year. It's It's been a good year I think for movies. Let's hope it's a, an even better year for 2017. So we'll be starting off with the month of January. Uh, two few movies which released early in the year. So we have a split by M. Night Shyamalan and James McAvoy and going by the reviews it seems that it is a back to form for M. Night. Anil, have you seen the trailer? I have seen the trailer. I, I mean it's, it's a very interesting take on split personalities. I mean that's something, uh, uh, that twist is something that uh, M. Night had focused on making his own for so long that I think he has strayed from it, from, from the original vision kind of that he had which was to make good movies and be original now it's, it's it's split seems to be one of those movies that he is coming back and making movies that try not to pander to that same theme which is put a twist in the end and then that's what i surmise from the trailer i hope it is like that and james mcavoy is very underrated actor and i i think he looks brilliant in the trailer right uh, and everyone is saying that this is return but i thought his actual return was with his last movie called the visit if I, it was a very awesome fall horror movie that he made and it went every, uh, under everyone's mm-hmm. yeah i think uh he gets a very bad rap. He is an amazing writer, if you think about it. I mean, uh, there's a you speak about uh, the visit. There's a more underrated movie called uh, the, uh, called Devil, which uh, he had scripted, which is also a, a very very good uh, study. If uh, people from different facets of life are stuck in a confined space and what goes on between them over uh, extenuating circumstances, that is something which M. Night Shyamalan does beautifully. I think that was captured very well in Village, another very underrated movie, something which got got fucked over by, you know, the studios promoting it as a period piece, well, and as a horror film, which was, at the end of the day, was just a romantic film. And also, I think the split has an amazing cast, like Arun mentioned, James McAvoy, Anya Taylor-Joy from uh, The Witch, who is an who is one of the best up-and-coming actresses. I get a very uh, Jennifer Lawrence feel from her. And yeah, he is directing and uh, has written the screenplay for the same. And this ha- this will come out on January 20th. So I would not expect uh, a lot of people to go and watch this in theaters because of our uh, sense study sense about. Uh, but uh, the premise, the premise is that uh, this guy has like uh, multiple personality disorder, and he has three teenagers and keeps them in his basement. This is uh, Silence of the Lambs, me host of other things which M. Night Shyamalan is familiar with. Right, and as you mentioned, he's a great writer. He also wrote Stuart Little. Yeah, Stuart Little so, is an amazing film. It doesn't get enough credit. So next up, we have another movie which is creating a lot of buzz in the uh, award circle. It's called Gold by Matthew McConaughey. And uh, it's a true story in which uh, he plays a trader who exports gold from Indonesia. Right? It gave me a very Wolf Wall Street vibe. Uh, can you tell us more about this film? Because I haven't uh, heard about this. Or uh... It's basically gold trading and which he exploits all the legal loopholes. Okay, and uh, this is set in... Uh, is this a period piece? or No, no. It's, it's a very modern film. It's like uh, set around, I think, the same time in which Wolf of Wall Street took place, maybe in the 90s or the early 2000s. That okay, is why I think it has a very Wolf of Wall Street feel. I, I mean, if you look at the trailer, uh, Bishak, you will sort of understand what Arindam is talking about, why this movie has that very distinct Wolf of Wall Street feel, because you'll see a lot of the same uh, spaces, uh, maybe the studios even that were there in Wolf of Wall Street, and 
has kind of the same be the system kind of vibe to it so in february we have uh, two very interesting movies on the 10th we will have two movies two of us here are very excited for and i'm excited so, for both in fact i'm yeah. excited for another movie called a cure for wellness so three movies coming out in the right a cure for wellness uh, by the same guy who does the pirates movies gold ribbons it looked very freaky so coming back to the two movies uh, listed uh, the first is lego batman movie i think they named it to the casting with this one they had uh, michael cera playing robin and zack gelfinicus is joker and will arnett of course is in bat interesting that they also had rosario dawson playing uh, barbara gordon as That's long as movie. they veer away from all the bat incest and all of that which they will it's going <laughs> to be it's going to be an amazing uh, watch i mean will arnett as uh, he uh, after michael keaton i think he is my favorite batman uh, no uh, i i i guess uh, I mean the animated Batman just is the best right after him Kevin Conroy it starts uh, after Kevin Yeah it it all starts after Kevin Conroy and then it moves to uh, uh, Michael Keaton and then it of course is Will Arnett I mean just the uh, his just his appearances in the Lego movie were just incredible the the bat song uh, even when he steals the Millennium Falcon those were some of the most beautiful and one of the most memorable uh, parts of uh, Lego movie and some of the most stand out moments from 2014 I'm really looking forward to Lego Batman movie and as uh, moving on as as Anir was uh, is very excited about John Wick as well. I am so, I, I am yeah. super duper excited about John Wick uh, the second part. I mean the first movie we didn't expect too much because we have not seen uh, uh, Keanu Reeves being in movies that stand out for a long long time. The Matrix. Uh, but yeah for a long time Matrix came out of <laughs> well over a decade ago. Now you can I'm talking about recently we haven't seen any good movies that he has been in. So but but so this was one of those movies was it didn't have anything attached to it. It had an awesome cast, yes, but uh, it had uh, a director who was a uh, previously a stunt director and when was making his debut movie. So it was something that we didn't expect to do too well. I I me for one didn't expect this movie to do well. I was blown away by the action scenes. I mean, I think that's where he does well if you look at it. Keanu Reeves because Let's just be honest. He's not one of the best actors in the world, but his face, I think, is a wooden face, is best for movies uh, uh, that are in this genre, which are which is the action genre, yeah. and that's what happened in John Wick. It was such an awesome movie that had brilliant choreography. I mean, it had brilliant, brilliant choreography, and it was a proper action movie. Which you know, when we talk about action, you have you have seen this proliferation of. a lot of you know kung fu and all this martial arts and all that yeah. but you didn't have a proper gun gun based a shootout a john woo type of movie yeah that's what you didn't have for a long time and now with john wick you know that that has been opened up that has opened up in a big way and john wick part 2 if you have seen some of the teaser videos that are out in one in which keanu reeves was you know, sort of just in a gun range and he was loading and shooting his guns it looked amazing it looked freaking amazing uh, so i'm really excited for this iron mcshane is back uh, you might remember him from deadwood he was amazing in and then and also, he was also he was also the voice of the tiger in kung fu panda and it's interesting because this is the first time since the matrix that keanu reeves is reuniting with lawrence fishburne yes. so that is something to look forward to and also it stars bridget monahan common who is who has made a part of making of appearing in these uh, legendary uh, indie cult films like uh, I, I, if you've seen smoking aces that is an amazing film you guys should go out of your way to check it out it's a, it's a great Definitely. great uh, it's a, it's an amazing film set in vegas about you know seven different gang- gangsters going out to hit one guy uh, and Scott Ryan Reynolds Scott Ryan Reynolds Scott Ryan Reynolds is just fine in like one of his weirdest roles ever he plays a new nazi that guy he looks really fine. different in that movie today is a movie called in a valley of violence it's uh, john wick set in the old west i would highly recommend you guys like watch it it's made by this director called ty west yeah ty west he's uh, i was just about to uh, say this is like it was perfect uh, his track record is almost perfect he made genre movies and he makes some of the best ones out there Uh, this one was clearly Sergio Leone inspired, and it was an amazing movie. Ty West is along with Adam Wingard. Ty West is one of my favorite. Uh... horror film director Ty West also made House of the Devil and he also made this he also made this movie called uh, The Roost which I uh, which I highly recommend that you guys check out he also made uh, one of my favorite horror films from 2013 called The Sacrament which was a vice type documentary about uh, people uh, about a religious cult leader so if you guys want to check out good action films or good horror films Ty West and Adam Wingard are the future for this genre so next up on the releasing on the 24th of February we have the movie Get Out yeah Tell directed by directed and screenplay by John Kian Peel, my boy from uh, Kian Peel. He, uh, if you follow Kian Peel and if you follow their uh, 
track record, you would know that Jordan Peele is an avowed horror, horror enthusiast and this is his first uh, foray into directing and uh, he chose to do, instead of a comedy film, he chose to do a horror film, which is interesting and it stars Daniel Kaluuya, who, would you, who you would re, uh, recognize from the first uh, season's episode 2 of Black Mirror. Yes. And yeah, uh, but there's not a lot known about this film, but then again, the, th- the trailer looks amazing and also, uh, it, it just features an axe-wielding madman, you know, who is frightening a room of people who, who, are, who have just gathered there and there's just one one uh, one motherfucker who's just trying to kill people so that looks uh, it looks amazing and what do you guys think about get out judging by what they've done in their shots if you notice the halloween shots they are some of the best uh, like the short horror movies that have been made in quite some time yeah. they have a lot of scope though i liked keanu so if you notice from the third act of keanu it didn't actually stick the landing but they were going for something new and i thought it was quite uh, well done from uh, this movie get out i think i get a very distinct stepford wife's vibe to it i mean you from the trailer at least that's what i felt there was a very distinct stepford vibes to it and you know where people are acting abnormally in this very perfect society i i this is something that i think uh, will be very interesting to watch i think it has it is trying to explore a lot of the current scenario in the u.s which is the uh, whole uh, racism angle and let's see how it pans out so next up in March, we have the blockbusters coming in. It's quite early, right? Before they used to like release the blockbusters sometimes in May, June or July. And this time, the big success of Deadpool, during, which was released in February, I think they're getting the push towards an earlier release. So we have uh, Logan and T2 coming out on the 3rd of March. T2 is Strange Spotting 2 and Logan, of course, is an adaptation of Old Man Logan by Mark Miller. Yeah, apart from Star Wars, uh, which we will get into a little bit later, Train Spotting 2 is one movie which I'm looking forward to the most this year. And I'm really glad because I, I can hardly wait that it's coming out so early. It's coming out in March. Uh, directed, of course, and not only has Danny Boyle come out and the original cast come out, uh, like Evan McGregor, John Lee Miller, even Bremner, Robert Carlyle, Kelly McDonald, James Cosmo, all of these people are coming back. But also every cast, which the, every uh, uh, production person and uh, behind the scenes person that they used for the original 1996 film has come back for Tales Falling 2. The trailer looks amazing. It's one of my, it's by far my favorite trailer of 2017 thus far. Uh, but it, it just looks fucking brilliant. I don't know how much of the original movie we'll get to watch in theaters, but this is a movie which I will definitely get on Blu-ray as well. This is this just looks freaking brilliant. It's an adaptation of the Train Spotting uh, s- sequel, which was called Porno, but obviously you can't call that. So they're naming it Train Spotting Two, and it's set 20 years after the events of uh, Train Spotting One. The soundtrack also sounds great. You have uh, Wolf uh, Wolf Alice's Silk playing in the thing. You have you have a brand new updated uh, Train Spotting monologue by Evan McGregor for this Facebook generation. It's it just looks great. I really hope it lives up to all the, to the to the hype and I really hope that it it is as good as the book and it is as good as the original film. I'm a big fan of Robert Carlyle. I, I try to watch as many movies of his. I know that Come uh, out of here, you can't <laughs> Yeah, he's a great actor. He he he's short, but he is a power bomb when he when he's in those movies. Train Spotting was one of those movies. You know, it hits you. It has this impact that you it just lasts for you for a long time, and you just can't get rid of the movie from your consciousness. Let's just call it that. But the, the fact that most of the cast have come back tells you that you know uh, this movie is going to have a fantastic script. You expect uh, a lot of the same themes to be repeated, but then uh, I'm sure it has been updated for the present generation or the Facebook generation, like Abhishek called it. It's, it's very interesting to see that trailer took a lot of the cues from the old movies, it, but I, at, at the same time, it didn't feel like... It was trying to emulate the old movie, but it was trying to be something new. So it's definitely something that people should be excited about because for people who have not seen Train Spotting, people should definitely go out and watch it because they'll understand why we are excited about this movie. Definitely, we'll go out and watch it for sure. And also, people who like the listeners out there who have been born in the '90s, uh, this is a movie which defined a generation for for people like us who were born in the '80s. This movie defined a generation. This was an alternative to all, the, uh, apart from the music, this was an alternative form of cinema which came out then. And it explored a lot of themes which were not, I wouldn't say taboo, but uh, which were which were not, you know, people didn't talk about these things as much as 
uh, after since since train spotting did and it it came across as an artsy film but was much more than that it's a, a tremendously quotable film you can watch it any time at least i can watch it any time of the year and, and i can i i really cannot wait for train spotting too. and this is the one movie that danny boyle should have should be recognized for and not for that movie yeah, that he is dog millionaire yeah. exactly i hate that movie i hate 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 that movie but i can explain that right here yeah. but going back to it train spotting is what he should be known for they have a very hit and miss track record fox has so just put it at that problem with fox is that they will excite you with their trailers and then you go and watch the movie and it's complete shit most of the x men movies have been that i'm sorry i don't find the brand singer movies to be really good movies i think the first x men movie which i truly like was first class and i also like the next one that they made but i think uh, they dip again when they made uh, days of the future past now we have another wolverine movie the timelines are all over we have no idea which reality this is fitting in and i think this is a step towards them trying to make a reboot they will also have deadpool in this movie who i think does not fit in with what we have been seeing at least there is a bright spot that this will be rated r so we can finally see the berserker wolverine unleash himself yeah uh, logan seems to be I mean I'm not a big fan of the X-Men series to be honest. I was a big fan of the comics and then when it got translated into screen for the first time, the first X3 movies, the X-Men movies, not my cup of tea. I got on board uh, with the, the revamped version of the X-Men series and then it was kind of something that was ex- interesting to watch. but they still screwed up a lot of those character development and they they focus only on things that they felt would suit the their own interest which is making more of a box office but uh, now with old man logan the trailer looks interesting but like you said we don't know because they they have a knack of you know putting all the good parts in the trailer and then not leaving anything for the movie itself let's see how much content they actually put in the movie i hope they do because this is the last outing for hugh jackman as well as wolverine and i i, I don't know they might go and cast somebody else abhishek i'm sure has his opinions on who should be cast in that role but uh, let's see maybe it'll be good maybe it won't be good i'm hoping it is good i'll not hold my breath i'm just waiting for abhishek to tell us how wrong we are in that x2 is one of the greatest Yes, because X2 is one of the greatest movies, uh, one of the greatest superhero movies of all time. X2 is fucking amazing. But let that's a rant for a different time. Just to second whatever Arindam and Anirban said, uh, the X Men. I, I grew up w- reading and watching the television show. I am a huge fan of the X Men. I love everything which they do. It's a, um, it's a very rich. Uh, mythology that they have and it's a very very set uh, set of characters that they have and this has uh, sadly has never been uh, translated as well as it could have on screen and what's interesting about uh, logan is yeah apart, apart from the rated r and the the bullshit timeline which we keep talking about it's scripted by it's cre- in, in fact the screenplay is by michael green now michael green is the same guy who is writing alien covenant Blade Runner 2049 and Murder on the Orient Express as well. So uh, Logan very so- very soon this year will give us an idea of how how the rest of these movies would go. You know, and it's been directed by James Mangold. I kind of liked The Wolverine the 2013 I guess uh, the movie which came out. Uh, I liked the uh, unleashed version which was the rated R cut of the film. I think that was uh, a, a, a good a good watch probably because I love the comic book which it was set on uh, Frank Miller's run on uh, on Wolverine but then again I have no hopes about uh, for logan this is a movie which i don't really care about just because you have johnny cash and johnny cash makes everything epic J- that doesn't translate into a good film i don't think this will be a very good film they're just trying to have deadpool in it and i don't and i don't really think deadpool will be featured in the movie he'll just be there in the end credits but uh, yeah i would not hold my breath like anir said to for this to be a great film uh, it'll just be what it is and you know they'll just find Tom Hardy and just give him a lot of money to be the, the new Wolverine. I'm just really pissed off when you get to see a Wolverine in an Iron Man armor fighting Red Skull, you know, because that is what happened in the old Man Logan books. So and I'm with really the Captain that. America shield and him tearing tearing out from uh, from Hulk's uh, belly. Oh, next up, we have a movie of Skong Skull Island coming out in 10. Abhishek. Skong Skull Island, I mean, it's again by Legendary Pictures and Warner Brothers. And in case you've been following the what what's going on in the in the... in the current scenario they are trying to have uh, they're trying to build their own franchise where they where they collaborate between uh, Kung Skull Island this property and uh, Godzilla 
they plan to have a movie in the near future probably 2019 where godzilla will finally come face to face with king kong it's directed by uh, jordan ward or richards and it stars tom hiddleston brie larson samuel L. jackson john c riley tom wilkinson toby kebbell jason michel cory hawkins this is an amazing star cast as it goes without saying also this guy the director has been had directed kings of summer as well which is a which is a great indie film apart from that i think uh, they, they are going for a very 60s 60s and 70s feel about the entire thing it has shades of apocalypse now even the way the trailer is uh, i think clearly uh, aiming for apocalypse now by the looks yeah. and the color grading uh, and even the way the trailer is cut i think it looks very apocalypse now very uh, vietnamish and the humor is also on point uh, at least for the most parts from what it comes across in the trailers i really love the uh, the previous king kong film which was made by uh, uh, by peter jackson i think i'm the one of the two people in the world who absolutely loved it i re- have a really good vibe from this film i really hope that this lives up to the hype i really hope that it lives up to the expectations that a lot of people have from classic monster films like myself that we get a very full fledged franchise out of it. i'm really tired of monster movies I, i mean i can't put it in any other way I've, i've i've gone to all of these monster movies been constantly disappointed and when i look at skull island i am sort of not there yet i mean i've seen nothing that will excite me i'm sorry abhishek but you know this is just one of the things it's got this awesome cast it's got hilston it's got brie larson it's got samuel l jackson you know, all all things that should make you excited you know that should excite you to an extent that you should be able to you know say hey, look i'm going to book my tickets right now and i want to watch this movie but that's doing nothing for me i i i don't know what it is about the movie it just feels too outlandish i mean it is supposed to be outlandish but it feels outlandish to a level that i'm saying like nah i just don't want to watch it okay that's a, it's always nice to have you know different opinions on the movie and we will be reviewing it so it will be very interesting to see your take and if we agree with you or maybe you fall into our team after watching the movie yeah i, I maybe i mean i'm always excited you know i have this philosophy that it's very important to watch shit movies because otherwise you don't appreciate good movies so you know i end up going for a lot of the shit movies in which case i hope this is not a shit movie maybe it'll surprise me who knows did you like godzilla though i'm sort of i like the monster to a certain extent but rest everything was just too much going on in that movie okay so next up we have the belco experiment releasing on the 17th of march we have talked at length about it you can check it out in our previous podcast the links in the description And next up, we have the Ghost in the Shell adaptation. So that is releasing on the 29th of March. Uh, Anil, tell us why you're excited about this. I'm excited because I'm a big Ghost in the Shell fan. I mean, it actually introduced me to a lot of mecha, the mecha universe for me, and a sort of uh, it was a gateway for me into the mecha universe. You know, I'm not a big mecha fan, but it sort of helped me get in terms with the whole mecha universe that there is there in the japanese anime and all i know there is a certain bit of white washing that will go in this movie because they'll introduce characters that are white and they don't need to be perhaps to a certain extent but it also has beat takeshi who is one of my absolutely favorite uh, japanese actors and he's there in this movie i'm sure he'll have his trademark ticks in the movie but i don't care i i, I want to watch it i i love the way that they approach the whole uh, the, the nudity thing that was there in the anime and they put a body suit on her which was a very interesting way to approach uh, that problem for the global audience the trailer itself looks wild. Aki for me to be genuinely interested in this movie and it it was inspired from Blade Runner and I think we saw a lot of that from the trailers and you're right about the body so aspect of the movie I think we nailed it with that because it would not make sense to put nipples on a robot right why would you do that if you're actually creating it I wouldn't mind actually I wouldn't mind <laughs> to be honest but, <laughs> but yeah it's a, it's a great way to fit it into a PG two problems are one is the white washing that will happen obviously it's got scarlet johansson i don't mind her it's also got juliet binoche and michael pitt but uh, the second problem that is there is that uh, you know it might uh, veer entirely in a different direction from the original series and that is to a large extent due to the director his largely inexperienced self he directed i think snow white and the uh, huntsman which was not really a great movie i think that's the uh, reason even why i think there is a chance of failure if this was handled by someone like Dennis Villeneuve who is doing Blade Runner i think it would be in capable hands and we could be sure that it would be something awesome that we could watch 
And uh, I, I saw that they had created some new uh, aspects to the movie, if you can remember. There's that Kill bill scene. Yes. In with the one wearing the Kabuki mask she entered. Yes, the one I with the sword. Right. That looked pretty awesome, and I think it will come up really well in the movie as well. So, Abhishek. There's uh, not a lot I can say which has not been covered already by Anir. An interesting part about this entire thing is it's been um, the screenplay is by Jonathan Herman. The, the same guy, he's the same guy. He's also a very inexperienced yeah, when it comes to Hollywood wranglings, as uh, Anir has pointed out. Rupert Sanders has been uh, has only done one. Jonathan Herman also has done just one film, but that film was fucking amazing, and that was straight out of Compton. He did the screenplay for that. So that gives me just a little bit of hope, but not enough that I'll be excited for this film. I'm a huge fan of the anime, although I've just watched it once uh, years back. But then again, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan. I can understand why it's so influential along with Akira. I completely get why people are here, are waiting for this movie with bated breath. And I can also understand why the internet is at, has an outrage that about the complete uh, whitewashing of these characters as well. I completely understand these points. Just that uh, I'm not holding my breath again because it's been directed uh, and the screenplay are by two people people who I would not really bank on to make a very good film. So yeah, that's about it. I mean, they're trying to sell it through Scarlett Johansson, Michael Pitt and Takeshi Kitano. Uh, but apart from that, that's that's about it. There's nothing much to add to it. And, and I haven't really watched the trailers, to be honest. I'm just waiting for the movie to come out and I'll just make my opinions right then. So next up in May, we have Guardians of the Galaxy opening up during the first weekend. Uh, fit. So we've talked a lot about it and I think it's going to make a ton of movie. Even it doesn't matter if it's good or it doesn't matter if it's bad. It's pure box office. So next up, or releasing on the 12th, we have King Arthur. And it is a, it's a return of one of the directors that we love, but we have come to hate in uh, some of his movies that he has made. Uh, so tell us, uh, are you excited for King Arthur, Vishit? What the fuck is King Arthur? Has anyone seen the trailer? What the fuck is going on <laughs> in the fucking trailer? I have, I have seen King There's Arthur. There's like trailer. so much going on. This is just like Night's Tale, man. And what has Guy Ritchie been doing with his life? This guy made Snatch. This guy made Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels. This guy made Rock and Roller. And something has happened to him. He's made two horrible Sherlock Holmes films trying to cash in on all, all of that uh, franchise money. He made a complete uh, fool of himself trying to tackle psychology and all of that in Revolver. And now he is dealing with King Arthur. But then again, if there is one director who I can trust <laughs> or who I think can pull it off, apart from Edgar Wright, is Guy Ritchie. So it's there. But he has like uh, Charlie Hunnam as the lead who is not really known for his acting. So no, uh, here's, here's where I'll disagree, Abhishek. I, I know Charlie Hunnam in movies, not a big Big bag, you know, not Sons a of Anarchy, man. I know, I know. Sons of Anarchy is where I love him from. Sons of Anarchy is what you should know him for and probably do. My problem with, him, uh, uh, with Guy Ritchie is, you know, like Danny Boyd, he should do big stuff and then come back to do the small stuff like in between these movies. True. Guy Ritchie is not doing that. He has become one of the worst uh, big movie directors, creates these soulless blockbusters. I'll tell you what happened to him. I know exactly what happened to him. Madonna happened to him. Right. Madonna, I was just going to say. Like Madonna screwed him up, you know. Maybe that's the reason, but uh, he does not deserve this in his filmography. Early films are some of the greatest. Some British chap just, just should just come down, hand him a very limited budget, and just tell him to go make the real rock and roll. They should just rock. reunite and make Lock Shot Two, Two Smoking Barrels Part Two or Snatch right. Part Two. Yeah, I would. I would. We should absolutely love that. I'll be super duper excited if there was a part two for any of those two movies that you just mentioned. Train Spotting Two is a hit. There is a chance that that might happen. Because uh, if you remember Train Spotting and all these British movies, it came out around the same era. Yeah, and I if that is a success, this might prompt them to make to for them to reunite the original cast and the directors and go make those movies. But Danny Boyle knows restraint when he has when he needs it, right? Guy Ritchie, I think he has moved into this territory where he only wants to do big budget movies. If you've seen the trailer for King Arthur, it looks like he has been, he has an absolute treasure chest of a budget which is going to spend all out. And and that is not what we want if we want Guy Ritchie because Guy, all those movies that were good were not because of those big budget scenes. It was because of crisp writing. All those beautiful dialogues that were there in those movies. I mean, you just memorable scenes that were there. None of them are big budget. So all of his movies are incredibly quotable. They, yes. it, the only reason why a movie movie lives on in people's, you know, in someone's mind is if you can go back to it and quote it in your day-to-day -day life. 
Like I'm someone who loves movies, and every time someone fucks me over, I just do you know what nemesis means? These are things which Guy Ritchie unfortunately has forgotten. And in before we move on to the next next film, I would just have you know that King Arthur: Legend of the Sword coming out on May 12th, Warner Brothers and Village Roadshow Pictures also stars David Beckham, King David himself. He's going to make an appearance, grace us with his presence. Wait, wait, it's also got Eric Bana, and it's also Fuck got Eric Jude Bana. Law. Hey, come Fuck on, you can't. Jude Law. It s- has David Beckham. It has David fucking Beckham. Yeah, number seven himself. Eric Bana, man. Uh, Eric Bana, Chopper, Chopper, man. Chopper. Yeah, Chopper is fucking awesome. Okay, next up, we have... It's a movie by a guy called... I don't know if you've heard of him. He's called Ridley Scott. And he's making a movie called Alien Covenant. And it's releasing on the 19th. So, Abhishek, are you excited for Alien Covenant? Of course, I'm excited for Alien Covenant. This is a movie... If it And if it is actually how I think it's going to play out, this movie is the movie which, which Ridley Scott was supposed to make 20 years ago. For some odd reason, he still doesn't, he still has not cast Sigourney Weaver in this film, which fucking boggles my mind. But it still has Michael Fassbender, Catherine Watterson, Damien Bashir, and James Franco. This guy's filmography is just going haywire. Yeah, his so his filmography is like an acid trip. He does such weird films and he just pops out of nowhere, you know. And this is, uh, I'm really excited for the film. And you know what? what's more, what got me excited about Alien Covenant is because I was burned by Prometheus. The, the teaser poster which came out with the picture of the alien and un- underneath, instead of Covenant, just run. Fuck. That was incredible. You know why I'm a little afraid for this movie? It's that Alien was successful and Aliens as well was because they were limited to a confined space. Over here, Prometheus also had a huge scope. I mean, it should have that scope, but the problem is that I thought that it was like too big. It has to be an out-and-out horror, like something is coming after you. But uh, that aspect seems to have been lost in this trailer. At least that's what I felt. And it looked like a slasher. And it 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 should not be a slasher. But it can work, you know, because, because I will go back to another film which is closely related. Now it has become related with Alien and that is Predator. Predator had an amazing locale. It was set in a forest. It was like a huge, uh, it was set in the Amazon. And it worked there because you don't really need to be there for the sense of claustrophobia to exist if they're confined to one particular space. It can exist if you build the characters that way. And that is where it's going to all come down to. Because it's again, the screenplay is by Jack Taglin and Mikey Green, who we just spoke about earlier. And it all comes down to Ridley Scott. Can he can he pull a George Miller or is he going to be the old Ridley Scott, the crazy old Ridley Scott that we, he has come to be known for over the past decade or so? The last movie that he did was like one of my favorite movies of that year, it's The Martian. So I thought that was really well done and it was something that we didn't expect from Ridley Scott. I mean, and it didn't look like a Ridley Scott film as well. We're not sure like which Ridley Scott we're going to get for Alien Covenant. I hope it is the old one. I, I really hope it is the old one because I got really excited for Prometheus. And when I went there, I just saw a movie in which Ridley Scott had the God Complex and I was trying to explain the origin of life. I was like, fuck that shit, man. What is going on in this movie? It's like, I didn't know what was going on. It was just a movie which I had to struggle to comprehend. And I don't want to watch stuff that I am struggling to comprehend when I'm going to watch an Aliens movie. That's what I thought it was, a prequel to Aliens. That's what it was being sold as, like it was being marketed as. I hope when they come back to this movie, they're they're going to actually realize that, yeah, that, that is what we should have done in the first place. Let's not try to explain the origin of life. God knows that that has been done in so many movies. Let's not do that and let's just go back to what we were good at doing, which was the original Alien franchise. I don't know if you know, but there's a game that is out there. I, I've forgotten the name. Uh, maybe Mrigang can help us uh, figure that out. I actually follows Sigourney Weaver's daughter on planet Earth and she's grown up adult and she sort of gets this uh, distress signal and then she goes to investigate and she's sort of faced with the same sort of uh, scenario where she has to escape the alien and the game looks so fresh and scary and, and that is something. Why isn't that a proper idea that is being pursued? I, I would called, be happy to watch it. It's called Alien Isolation. I think that's what it is. Yes. Yeah, it's called Alien Isolation. Speaking about Prometheus, uh, you know, that movie gets a lot of grief and uh, that movie is not really well regarded among hardcore sci-fi fans. But how cool was that opening shot? The yes. opening shot and the ending shot where they show the, the mother, that that was incredible and that got me excited for, for the new Alien film as well. And also, you know, the opening shot with the uh, engineers drinking the black fluid and then them committing suicide. 
those were really good ideas and i think if that is what really scott taps into for alien covenant it's going to be a fascinating watch so coming down on the 26th of may dwayne the rock johnson will finally kill the pirates franchise because baywatch and pirates of the caribbean dead man tell no tales is releasing on the same day so abhishek <laughs> Walt Disney, Walt Disney Pictures. What the fuck are you doing, my friends? You're you're releasing Star Wars and Pirates of the Caribbean. Fucking hell! This is uh, directed by. Oh, it has two directors, by the way, Joachim Roning and Espen Sandberg. If if you know anything about from your football, you know that Swedish guys like to do things in in pairs. The the Swedish football team has two coaches or had two coaches, and now two Swedish guys are collaborating to make Pirates of the Caribbean: Dead Man Tell No Tales. And Arundhav, I would have you know that this stars Paul McCartney. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> what the fuck is going on with this film? Johnny Depp returns, Javier Bardem, Orlando Bloom returns, uh, Jeffrey Rush, of course, he is there. Stephen Graham and Kira Knightley is also uh, returning for Pirates of the Caribbean. Dead Man Tells No Tales and Sir Paul McCartney is going to be a part of this film, living up to trying to live up to the legacy left behind by the Rolling Stones. God help fans. us, man. God help us. <laughs> Franchise in which career has come to an end. You know, if you want to end your career, go do a movie in a pirates franchise because that has happened to every actor that has been attached to these movies. They've been relegated to bad roles. Look at, I think even Ian McShane was part of the previous movie, right? He yeah, was, yeah, yeah. And it was. also it also ends your self respect because Orlando Bloom, right after the previous Pirates of the Caribbean, got bitch slapped by Justin Bieber in an airport. So <laughs> <laughs> you really have to be some kind of a of a man to be slapped by a twelve year old girl. So <laughs> there you go. Which are you most excited to watch? Will you watch Baywatch or will you watch Pirates? Is that even a question that we should be asking? Because you all know the answer to this. I'm not going to go for the Pirates movie. I didn't go for the last Pirate movie or the last Pirate movie or the movie before that. I didn't go because these are all sellout movies. You know, Johnny Depp used to be an awesome actor. When did he stop being an awesome actor? You can retrace it back ago, to the Pirates. Twenty-five years ago, he stopped being an awesome actor. Maybe. Yeah, but can we I stop make calling Johnny Depp an awesome actor? The last good role which he did was Donnie Brasco, and it came out like fucking ages ago. I was back in sure. school when Donnie Brasco came out. Can we stop calling him an awesome actor? He I had l- his time. I liked him. In, I liked him in Secret Window. That was a good movie. Did it have John Turturro in that movie? Yeah, they had yes. John Turturro as his alter ego. Yeah. Yes. Right, right, right. Spoiler alert. But yeah, it's it's one of those things, right? You watch pirate movie. It's a big budget sellout movie. That's what it is. And Johnny Depp is stuck in that role. He is. When I say stuck in that role, he plays the same characters even in his other movies. Man, it's just. So irritating to watch now. It's even in real life he looks like that now. He looks like Jack Sparrow in real life. I know it's an iconic character, but you can't play that in real life. Break out of character once in a while, dude. Be watch it is. I normally don't agree with this person who I'm going to refer to now, but this guy made wrote an open letter on Twitter to Johnny Depp after his uh, domestic abuse uh, problems came uh, came to the surface, and that guy is Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan sums it up beautifully. He says, "Dude, you're about to be 60." Stop dressing like you're 30 years old. Believe it or not, Johnny Depp is going to be 60 years old, and that guy he j- doesn't act his age. He is a part of a horrible rock band called Hollywood Vampires. He has done extremely bad films, and he is like Arun Bhan said. He believes that that he is actually the roles that he plays. He has. Bought into that gimmick, it's still real to him. I think he, sh- if he was not an actor, he should have been a pro wrestler. That's the perfect thing for him to do. Isn't Hollywood Vampire the perfect brand for him to be? Oh yeah, exactly. All of the washouts. Coming to June, we have Wonder Woman, which is releasing on the second. I think hopefully that will be the movie that makes DC EU become a standard bearer for the entire universe. Still, I think. Doing a very good job at. Are uh, you be interested to see Wonder Woman? Yes, I will be interested to watch Gal Gadot in action. That's what you're asking. I mean, why wouldn't you be excited to watch Gal Gadot? She is she is the flavor of the season, but she is a flavor of the season for a reason. Uh, that rhymes well. But she looks so hot. She looks so hot, and she looks amazing. This the trailer. It looks really good. That that the soundtrack that comes on for the trailer is just an iconic sound, man. And when it comes on, I know I want to watch Gal Gadot. I have had this association now. I am going to watch this movie for sure. I love Gal Gadot as uh, Wonder Woman. I think she was one of the brightest sparks, the only bright spot out of the flaming garbage pile that was uh, Batman vs Superman. But I'm not really. I don't really uh, buy into the fact that this is going to be uh, the resurrection of DC and uh, this is going to be the 
the uh, the finally the part where they get it together and all of that. Uh, Jeff Johns, of course, is attached to it. He's writing the screenplay and it stars Chris Pine, Corey Nielsen, Robin Wright, uh, Lucy Davis, a very strong female cast along with Gal Gadot. And it's directed by a female director as well, Patty Jenkins. But I have no hopes. You know why? The only reason is the fucking people who cut trailers, man. Warner Brothers should just stop cutting trailers. These guys are giving away the entire film in the trailers. If if you watch the trailer, they've given away the entire half of the plot there. Why are you doing this to yourself? You can't blame audiences. You can't blame Rotten Tomatoes. You can't blame Star Wars. You can't blame Marvel. You can't blame Disney for it. You are doing this. You are doing this to yourselves. What the fuck is going on with your thought process is what I want to know. I would want to be a fly on the wall to see these business meetings uh, which happen when each of these movies are being discussed or the decisions about these films are taken because these guys have no idea how to cut trailers, have, have no idea how to make movies and they're just ruining characters for generations to come. I think it can be blamed on one guy, he's called Kevin Soihara and he was the one who pushed the Doomsday reveal in the third trailer. And I uh, and like I mentioned before that they show that Robin Wright is the one who gets shot in the island and which uh, le- leads Wonder Woman to come to the island. I, I don't think, uh, I don't know the reason why they should show that in the trailer. Just save it. Like, you have cool shots, just show them. Show her, show her an action. Why do you have to show the plot? And I'm pretty sure there's a new trailer coming out for both Justice League and Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman will give away the, even the third act maybe. But Justice League, I, I would uh, you know, ask everyone not to go watch that because it will just ruin the movie if Zack Snyder hasn't done that already. So, coming to the next movie, we have The Mummy, which is coming out on the 9th, which is going to make a ton of money again. And we've talked about it at length. The link for that is mentioned below. Next up, we have another interesting movie from Pixar. I think it's the only movie by Pixar which is going to be released next year. It's Cars 3. And given by what they've shown us, from the trailers, it's going to be a darker version to it. I'm not sure if that is the intention, but... I, I think it'll be gritty in parts. I mean, it, it can't be very, you know, a very dark movie. It's Pixar's. I don't think they do dark movies. They do movies for children, which are kind of something that adults can also digest. I, I think that this will have sort of moments which are very dark, but at the same time, we will have moments that follow up will which will sort of make up for that. So I think it'll be a fun movie to watch. Anyway, I, I don't remember the last time I saw a bad Pixar movie. So it'll, it'll not be that dark. I don't think so. It looks gritty because of that one scene. But other than that, I don't think it'll be that dark. Yeah, uh, I don't really, haven't really watched the trailer for Cars 3. I haven't watched Cars 1 or Cars 2. And I really don't care about this film. So I, I don't think I'll be going out of my way to watch this film, though I might be forced to watch it. But then again, I'm not going to go out of my own volition to watch this film. But then again, very quickly, can I talk about uh, something else? Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. yeah, there is another movie which is coming out on the same day. And this is a biography of one of my favorite artists of all time. This is a movie calling out, coming out directed by this guy called Benny Boom called All Eyes on Me. And for all you 90s hip hop fans, you know what exactly is going to be. It's the biography of Tupac Shakur. Oh. This is, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> exactly right. Uh, it's coming out in uh, June 16th. And this is one movie I'm really excited for. And if uh, Straight Out of Compton is something to be uh, contended with, uh, this really might work. And if it does work, I'm really going to be very, 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 very happy about it. Uh, this is uh, t- uh, Tupac's story is something which deserves to be told. Uh, he has had an amazing life. His music lives on to, uh, you know, to inspire generations of uh, current and for, you know, future hip hop artists. So this is something I'm really excited for. And I guess uh, we should get a trailer about it soon as well. I would be more excited for Biggie Smalls movie. It, it has already, it's already there. Notorious. Yeah, but that's old, right? Yeah, 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 we, yeah. But then again, how yeah. many times can you tell the same story? It's a biography at the end of the day. And Anthony Mackie, I think he played uh, Tupac in... The yeah, Anthony movie. Mackie played Tupac. I hope they cast that guy who, they, uh, who as Tupac as uh, the same guy who... They cast him straight out of Compton. That guy looks exactly the fuck. Anthony Mackie shared universe. I was just asking that. Like, because they are making a dead room movie as well. <laughs> Death Records uh, movie. What is, this, what is this nonsense about shared universes in biographies, man? 
Oh, he means the same character is playing the same. Uh, uh, the same actor is playing the same character. Right. The same set of producers. They can do that. It'll be pretty awesome. It has been done before. No, no. I, I don't think. I don't think it's the same guy. Uh, but uh, this guy, from what from what my research, his father, uh, this uh, guy called Demester Ship Junior. His father used to manage to pack back in the day. The month of July, I think, is the biggest month of the year. We have uh, five big movies coming out. First off, we have Spider-Man: Homecoming. I I think it feel horribly at the box office. We have spoken about it also in our previous podcast. Next up, we have War of the Planet of the Apes. Abhishek. Are you excited for it? Not really. I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the old Charlton Heston film and I love the first part. I didn't like the second part as much, uh, which was called War of the Planet of the Apes. But what's interesting is uh, Matt Reeves, the director, his uh, if you check his Rotten Tomatoes, his career graph is just going from uh, strength to strength. His first film, which was Paul Bearer, was at 42%. Cloverfield is at 77%. Let Me In is at 88%. And Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is at 90%. So this guy he knows what he's doing and he's making... He was known for making these movies with very small budgets. Like I, I remember Cloverfield had a budget of just 25 million. Right? It went on to make 170 million in the box office. But apart from that, I think uh, he has the cast down right, uh, and it's going to be your standard what you have come to expect from a Planet of the Apes film. Uh, the the wars coming as they keep on saying the the the, the CGI looks amazing. You know, Caesar looks fucking amazing, and it, I, I think finally you can get get to hear the apes speak more legibly, speak more like humans. It has fucking Woody Harrelson. Who would have known? Like James Franco, this guy has this odd habit of, you know, turning up in weird films. So Woody Harrelson is in this film who's playing the villain. And uh, yeah, so let's see how it turns out. I'll probably watch it in theatres. And yeah, we'll, we'll get into a detailed review about it when it comes to it. Did you watch the uh, second movie? I have. I, 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 I watched the first movie. I watched the second movie. I watched the trailer for this. I think the first movie was better than the second. That's sure. a personal opinion. And the, the trailer for the third shows me that it's going to be just like the second. It's not going to be too different from the second movie at least in my opinion so I'm not very excited about this movie I don't think I'll go and watch it I'll watch it when it comes out you know where on the 21st we have two big movies coming out and I think Lucasfilm has made a very bad decision by deciding to release Valerian and the City of the Thousand Planets along with Dunkirk people will flock to go watch a Christopher Nolan movie and I don't think Valerian will get as that much of a response that it deserves that trailer. Uh, the trailer has shades of his uh, fifth element, which was and this looks to be the same. I don't think Luke Besson is beset by any of these Hollywood or Hollywood uh, things of release dates and all of that. I think he's a force of force of nature all to himself. I think he really <laughs> doesn't give a shit about uh, these uh, what movies coming out and when's coming out. I think he is one of the very few people who's who's willing to go out there and not dive into a genre film uh, in the sense like which is not a part of uh, of an already established franchise he's trying to create something by himself he's always done that he's uh, done that in fifth element and he's doing that now and it's uh, someone who has already a proven filmography someone uh, who, who can easily rest on his laurels uh, doesn't need to do all of that but he's putting his money where his mouth is and he's trying to make an original film and something which should be commended you know and I really don't think he cares about Dunkirk I really don't think people uh, hardcore sci-fi fans for me for example personally I would really go out and watch Valerian other than Dunkirk I will obviously watch Dunkirk afterwards but uh, hardcore sci-fi fans and this is a movie which is aimed towards that that fan base I really don't think uh, you know there should be a question as to which film you should be more uh, you should be more excited for you know, interestingly Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets is an adaptation of a French graphic novel which came out in the he, he has come out and said that it's 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 just the character names which he has taken he's doing completely his own spin on it I, I think I'll be more interested to watch Valerian just like Abhishek uh, just for the same reasons that he has mentioned I, I can't go any different than that I mean he has this Lupeso has this knack of you know, coming out and surprising us just when we think that he can't do any more good movies he comes out with this really fun movies let's not call them like really awesome movies but let's call them really awesomely fun movies like uh, uh, yeah, that, that's what Luke Besson does you know uh, he's way past when he used to make really iconic movies but he comes out with this really fun movies every now and then which you will have to go and watch. Taxi. Taxi was so awesome. I mean, it just, he does it. These are movies that you'll not even hear too much about and he'll just, he'll just come out and it'll be like one of the biggest, one of the movies to make a lot of money in that year. You know what, uh, him not giving a fuck reminds me of that 
German director who is a shit director. What's his name? Uwe Boll. Ball. Uwe Boll. Yeah, Uwe Boll, man. That guy. I don't know. I, but I don't again, know his, you guys know. Uwe Boll is all, all scam. Uh, what he does is he takes investment from people who have a lot of black money and he invests all of that money into the film and it, and it makes it into white. So what he's yeah, doing... Yeah, 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 yeah. That happens. happens. But do you know, he gets a lot of tax breaks from the from, government. Yeah, from the German sports. government. Yes, yes. Yeah, he does. He basically yeah, yeah, makes yeah, yeah, his yeah, yeah. for nothing. It's amazing. But uh, but what that guy does is still amazing, I will say. In that regards, I think we should realize that this movie, Dunkirk might be great. No discounting that fact. Might even win the Oscars. We have to go and see Valerian because we know that is going to be more interesting. It's not going to go down the same beaten trot because the scope that Dunkirk has to be interesting is limited. But if you look at Valerian, it has no finite scope when you think about it because it's just it's it's how much your imagination can limit you, right? Yeah. Right. And I also I can never I can never uh, write off Luc Besson because he has made one of the one of my favorite movies of all time, easily one of my top five, top six movies of all time, it fits in there, is Leon the Professional. That is such an amazing film. Such such great direction right there in that film. And that's the only reason why every time Luke Besson makes a film, I go out of my way to watch it. This guy has some amazing vision, although he has made some clangers in the past. But you always know that it's got to have very slick editing, very good camera work. Even though the acting may be a little shoddy here and there because of his weird uh, casting choices, you always know you're going to get very, very good uh, cinematics or uh, very good uh, visuals out of that film. And this is something which uh, Christopher Nolan doesn't provide for me, at least for me personally. Any guy who gets Min Sik Choi to do a Bollywood movie, oh sorry, Hollywood movie, come on, that, that's, that's count, that should count for something. Even though that exactly. was not a good movie, but he did bring him there. Next up, on the 28th, we have another biggie. It's uh, Dark Tower, finally being adapted from developmental hell. Uh, we have uh, Matthew McConaughey and Idris Elba. So, uh, Anil, have you read the book? I have. I read it a long time ago. Here's my point on it. I don't think that Stephen King can uh, Stephen King's works can be done justice to. There it is. Out there. I don't know if you'll agree with me, but that's what I think. I don't his, think his works can be adapted uh, to do them yeah. justice. Or just Stephen King in general. Because I think Stephen King in general has been adapted perfectly by Frank Darabont. Yeah, Both The Mist. Were, in a sense, yes, but that movie bombed like hell. No, I think what Anirban is trying to say, I think what Anirban is trying to say that his novels, his long-form books, uh, with the exception of Misery, uh, can never be adapted. You need a director. You had Rob Reiner directing Misery, but apart from Misery, I don't see his long-form works being translated as well as uh, as they deserve to be. Like, for example, Under the Dome um, is is a novel which was uh, adapted, uh, which was which didn't do great. But alternatively, I, I know I'm contradicting myself. Eleven twenty one sixty one was fucking brilliant. <laughs> so, they, right, they were, one of my favorite shows right, of last last year. Right, it was James Frank going back in time to you know stop the assassination of. Yep. Next up uh, in August we have Edgar Wright finally delivering a movie. So right after Scott Pilgrim way back when uh, he's coming back with a movie called Baby Drive, totally original movie. The previous movie was going to be Ant Man, but. Uh, Due to some creative differences, he didn't make that. And now he's back with Baby Driver. We just have some set photos. We, we don't have any trailers to go by. But you know that if it is released in India, we will surely be going out of our way to watch it. I have uh, the, the cast. I have the cast in front of me. It has Ansel Elgott, who I have never seen in any film, playing the protagonist. Then you have Lily James, Jamie Foxx, John Hamm, Kevin Spacey. Kevin fucking Spacey and John Bernthal, Panisha himself in the in the film. And it's about uh, this getaway driver who, uh, you know, who obviously ra- drives a getaway cars for a host of bank uh, bank robbers. So I think it's going to be a heist film. It's also going to have a lot of batshit crazy uh, references to a lot of old films. And it's going to have some amazing uh, direction as well. So I'm really excited for Baby Driver as well. I, I don't really think that if it has a lot of gratuitous violence and a lot of gore like most of, uh, like most of Edgar Wright's older films do, or, or even the strong language which most of his films Films to, I don't think we get a full version or the version is the, the way it's meant to be watched in our theatres because of our great sense of board. But this is something which I will also pick up on. Uh, I'll watch this movie just because it's being directed by Edgar Wright. I don't think this guy can do anything wrong. I don't think he has made a bad movie in his career. I'm going to watch it just because of Edgar Wright and I don't know what this plot line is going to be. I, I get the gist of it but till the trailer comes out, not going to uh, make any comments on that but I am going to watch it. I know it now just because of Edgar Wright. So next up 
up in the month of September, releasing on the 8th, we have another Stephen King adaptation. It's, it, uh, it was previously a TV movie starring with the great actor Tim Curry. So, Anir, will you think that this will change your mind about Stephen King adaptation? So, I'm scared of clowns. It's like I, I see a clown, there's something about that painted face that just rubs me the wrong way. I, I cross the street if I have to. It's not really a phobia, but it just I hate clowns. And I think this movie is perfect in that sense for me to go and watch. But as I said, I'm not going to change my opinion on how uh, Stephen King cannot, I, I believe, cannot be properly adapted to the big screen. Uh, at the same time, I also think that this movie is being made because we have this slew of this prank videos that have come up, all featuring uh, clowns. I, I, I didn't... I'm just tired of watching those videos being posted on social media and it just has irritated me to the point that I'm not excited for this movie anymore. But I'll still go and watch it. This could be one of the greatest viral marketing campaigns, right? Because when those news articles started popping up, I thought that this was uh, like related to this movie's promotions, which is uh, quite strange. And also, interestingly, uh, Kari Fukunaga from True Directive Season 1, that's directed. Yeah. And he also credited as a co-screen writer for it. So I have high hopes for this movie. Abhishek? Yeah, like uh, Anirban said, I am uh, I'm also, uh, you know, not very fond of fucking clowns. Uh, I don't really don't really care about them much. I just that I find them as, as, as an irritant. Anyway, uh, moving on to it. It's been directed by Andres Muschietti and it's coming out in September, like you mentioned. And it stars Bill Skarsgård, son of Stellan Skarsgård, as the titular clown or, uh, as, or as we would know him as Pennywise. So if you've not watched the original uh, adaptation, uh, the TV movie, which came out in the late 80s, 89 or 1990, if I'm not mistaken, you guys should go out of your way and check it out. It's an amazing uh, horror film made in a ve- with a very small budget. Uh, you guys should check that out as well and go out of your way to read the book as well because that it's one of my favorite uh, Stephen King uh, books. It is fucking creepy. It uh, It is an embodiment of everything what Stephen King stands for. Creepy, set in a very small environment and featuring kids uh, as uh, who have horrible things happen to them. So but yeah, just to give you a brief of what uh, this movie is, you have these uh, the group of friends known as the Losers Club who lose one of their uh, uh, one of their members to this Pennywise guy, this clown, and they go out a year after they go after him, and then shit just goes downhill. So yeah, I'm I'm not really excited for this film. I will not go out of my way to watch it in theaters. I'll probably catch it after it comes out. Um, you know, on the internet or something like that. But uh, yeah, uh, you mean to say that stranger things keep happening? <laughs> yeah, very stranger thing. Very yes, very stranger <laughs> things keep happening to them. <laughs> well played. So on the 29th, American Made is coming up. I don't know a lot of, about this movie. Abhishek, could you fill us in? Yes, American Made from Universal Studios, and this is also a collaboration between Doug Liman and my boy, my ultimate boy, Tom Cruise. It stars Tom Cruise, uh, Donald Gleason, Sarah Wright, uh, Jesse Plemons, and Caleb Landry Jones. Now, American Maid is about this pilot in the 70s or in the 60s who used to fly these, uh, these bales of uh, drugs from, uh, from South America to America. So it's a, it's, it's a story about that guy. And obviously, it stars Tom Cruise, so you know what to expect. It's going to have some amazing action. And uh, it was previously known as Mina. And uh, it's also a biographical crime drama. It's it's based on the story of this guy called Barry Seal, a former TWA pilot who's a, who became a drug smuggler. So I would expect this to be uh, much like uh, the 90s Johnny Depp film, uh, which was similar to this. Blow. So this is the vibe I get. And obviously, the reunion of Doug Liman and Tom Cruise. So these guys can do no wrong. None of their films are bad. So yeah, I'm really excited for this as well. This is something I would really watch in theaters and I would suggest you guys to watch in theaters as well. One takeaway that I do have is that I'm very surprised about one thing. Doug Lyman and Tom Cruise and this is has nothing sci-fi in it. I'm very surprised. But that's that's something that we'll leave for later. I'll reserve my judgment for now because I'll have to read up on this movie and maybe watch a trailer when it's out. So in October 6th we have two very big movies coming out on the same day. I'm pretty sure I'm going to cast them both. Uh, Blade Runner 2049 and Kingsman The Golden Circle. Uh, Abhishek, let's do this. Which, if it's the first day first show, which one are you watching? Blade Runner. And, and they are both being on the same. Blade Runner. There is no, no, there's no question as to what movie I'll be catching first. Blade Runner. I mean, my love for sci-fi stems from three very specific films. Uh, Alien, Terminator and Blade Runner. Uh, these films are 
very very close to me and this is a movie which i think has the original uh, people involved as well it stars Harrison Ford again yes although uh, with what you we've seen the trailer i think they're going to redo the entire the entire end of the film that means uh, what we got in the ulti- uh, in the director's cut is the ending that we're going for not the original film so i think uh, uh, you know i'm really excited for this golden circle yes of course but then again we know how it always works out with sequels in hollywood uh, but then again yeah it's uh, and it's uh, and obviously it's been directed by uh, by Dennis Villeneuve one of the best sci-fi directors in hollywood right now he's on an amazing tear and i and i have very 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 high hopes from this film and what about you which one will you watch first i i think it's the same for me i'm going to watch blade run i know that kingsman will uh, kingsman is going to be a bad movie or it's just going to be a paler movie in comparison to blade runner blade runner is uh, one of the original uh, you know movies out there when it comes to sci-fi and has it brought about a slew of android movies and it's it's one of the movies out there when you want to watch sci-fi uh, when you want to um, be introduced to a gateway to sci-fi movies like uh, abhishek said and this trailer actually was very interesting now we we got to see uh, the same cast coming back and addition of new very promising cast also and uh, it, it does look like it'll be a very good movie so uh, kingsman in comparison is it'll it'll be a fun movie but it'll not have the same impact as blade runner does so i'm going to watch uh, go to theaters to watch blade runners too also another thing the music one of the most iconic parts about blade runner is this movie has fed into my love for everything which is synth based music i love synth based mu- mu- based music till this day and this has that the ending string section of that film the dirt, dirty synth this is so much 1985 man i can't even begin to tell you this the music if they have that same synth based dark orchestral music this is going to be the shit to watch out for this year apart from star wars of course but yeah this this movie i'm really really excited for. what about you what movie are you uh, what do you think about uh, blade runner uh, and- i know uh, both movies are going to be good the thing is that i would rather watch kingsman first not because maybe one is better than the other it's that if blade runner overwhelms and then i watch kingsman i'm go- i'm not going to like kingsman at all and if it is anything like arrival i think i'm going to hate things which won't be the case as Matthew Vaughn will be the one doing it so i think uh, i'll be watching uh, kingsman first because that will have all the the fun the fun the fun, but the fun parts of it right because i don't have to think over it later on is a movie that you know after the movie i don't want to watch anything i want to this uh, movie after watching it next stuff we have the third movie in the cloudfield venture is it's called the god particle uh, as you know we know nothing about this movie is uh, is jj abrams i i'm hearing about it for the first time is jj uh, abrams attached to this yeah he's the executive pro- uh, producer back so so we'll it. have nothing to know about this film till say fucking october or something like that because <laughs> i don't think even the cast will know that they they are, they are in a cloud field film jj uh, abrams does his things you know and it's it's good it took for the most parts but at times it's kind of grating but you know what he's doing he loves what he's do he's doing i mean he he has feel work for a mentor for god's sake so he he knows what he's doing he'll have people involved who love the project who who love this genre of movies and he make a good film you know so apart from that there's nothing much to add to this this is another if it is actually coming out like you say and it's not shelved before the years end i think this is also a movie which i will not catch on theaters because to watch a clever feel film i would rather watch it at home you know just relax and just take it all in because there's so much going on in clever feel film so many callbacks to other sci-fi films uh, that this is something which i would love to watch by myself did you like uh, 10 for me yes it was an awesome movie except for the end i i mean i know you you want to see it as a follow up to clever feel but i saw it more uh, like a hostage movie rather than the movie that it turned out to be in the end i'm not saying it wasn't it was a bad movie it's just that the last 10 minutes of that movie is just doesn't feel like it's in, it's in sync with the rest of the movie coming back to this movie uh, i haven't seen the trailer as yet but i i know it has a cast that i can get behind is got the awesome chris out uh, who you might remember from uh, the it crowd has got uh, daniel bro uh, who was there in glorious bastard in glorious bastard and fast uh, faster and uh, it's also got elizabeth debicki who have developed a crush on from uh, night manager 
who, which which also had uh, Tom Hiddleston, which released as a short series last year. But apart from this, I don't know too much. But um, if it is as as Abhishek mentioned, that nobody does at this point. Uh, let's see. Maybe it'll be worth your while. I'm I'm going to catch it, but I'm going to catch it at home just like Abhishek. In November, we have two very big movie releases. And I think one that we have been wanting to see for a very long time. I'm not very sure how they're going to do a pull it off. And both of them have an air of, you know, ambiguity about them. Uh, first, on, on the 3rd of November, we have Thor Ragnarok coming out. And on the 17th, we have Justice League. So before we start ranting about the DC, can you just quickly tell us about Thor Ragnarok? Like, uh, what are your expectations? Are? Ragnarok, uh, I, mean, I think we have gotten into this discussion on a... For a, for a long time I think it looks to be very promising it's got a fantastic director attached to it in YTT and, and YTT is just awesome if you haven't seen Boy again you should go and watch it it's one of the best indie uh, New New Zealand uh, based movies out there and, and it's it's it's, it's got the same cast as, as Marvel movies does but it has culminated all of the Marvel movies that are there out there they have all sort of tried to point in a particular direction it looks like it's going to be Ragnarok Ragnarok uh, being being one of the uh, the war to end it all so so to speak so maybe that's where we can see a lot of characters really even uh, perishing in, in 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 the Marvel universe that makes space for other characters as well so it looks to be an interesting platform for all of this to happen and I think YTT is the perfect guy to actually orchestrate all this. So, yeah, it, it's definitely more interesting than, than what DC has in store for us. It's so weird that we're awaiting a Hulk and Thor movie more than a Justice League movie. <laughs> Fifteen years ago, if anybody told that, like, oh, what would have been your response to that? What, which do you think would make more money, uh, Justice League or Ragnarok? I, I think Ragnarok is definitely going to make much more move money than uh, than DC Justice League. That's purely from a simple reason now. We don't have enough young adults being as big fans of DC as I'm talking about the movies as they should be. Uh, and that is because of the direction, the, the haphazard direction that DC has sort of led the whole franchise into. There's just too much disorganization when it comes to shaping the universe. You have a an assortment of Euro superheroes who they want to bring into the same pay, same movie uh, to sort of cash in on all the all of the collective uh, audience. But it's not going to work because that's not how it works. As Marvel have pointed out uh, in, in the form of their movies, they, they know what formula to use and how to bring all these characters together. It seems to be much more you know, uh, uh, something that just is in flow. So it seems very natural to have a Thor Ragnarok that has all of these characters, all of the superheroes that come to us, this one movie and which acts as the platform. And then you have Justice League, which you know seems very forced. And I know you'll agree with me on this. It just looks like something that is forced. It's you know, one of those movies that was put together because studios wanted a movie that could have all the big DC superheroes on one screen so that they could say, look, wow, we have something to pitch against Marvel. But it's not going to work. That's not how you work. And you have to develop these characters to a certain level before you can exploit them. Now, Batman, uh, Chris Nolan's Batman doesn't fit into the same universe as the Superman. And you know that was a better Batman than, than the one that was in Batman versus Superman. And that's a fact. That's not something that I'm putting out there. That's a fact. And then it just doesn't fit in. So if you have all of this different characters, they don't fit in there. And you're trying to force fit them. It doesn't work. You need it to be more fluidic. That's what Thor is. And that's where the audience is. That's what the audience also relates to. And that's what they're going to flock to. They have isolated uh, one of the core of the audience and kids. There are people like there have been reports of kids crying during Superman fights because it's just too violent and too loud. And people are not interested in it. Let it be adults, let it be young adults, let it be kids. They're just not interested to see something that dark and when something like a Marvel movie pops up with all of color, everything, they're adapting comics after all and should not be that dark. You know, save that for the Marvel Netflix series which are doing so wonderfully. Like save that for uh, another R-rated movie that you can come up with with the success of Deadpool, I'm sure uh, Justice League Dark would be like, just like, go balls out on that. Yeah. 
So Abhishek, yeah, yeah, with the inclusion of Jeff Jones, Abhishek, do you think that he will make some changes? No, no, no. I don't think uh, they're going to make any change. I mean, the, if you've seen the Comic Con footage, that's the extent of the jokes you're going to get. Because they, if you go by their track record, they will put it all on the table, show it to you. Like, boss, see, this is what we're going to do, okay? You come to a theater, these are the jokes which we're going to play, and that's about it. And they released a three-minute teaser trailer. Who the fuck does that? It's <laughs> called a teaser for a reason. Three minutes, three and a half minutes of teaser. Like, what chutias are there in making decisions, man? I mean, look at the look at the rogues gallery which DC has, okay? They will, they have no, they have... Like such a wealth of characters that they have. And look at the characters which are there in Thor, Ragnarok, Grandmaster, Valkyrie, Scourge and Stephen no Strange. Gives- but no one gives a shit about these characters if you put them on paper. But look at the characters which, uh, you know, DCU has. Yeah, and comparing the rogues gallery from one uh, universe to the other, look at the one, look at the rogues gallery which DC has. You have Darkseid pulling the strings, you know, who is who was more iconic than... Uh, that Thanos was at any point in, in his comic book life. I know people will disagree with me. Listeners might disagree with me that Darkseid is all big. But then again, go back and read the comic books, man. Darkseid is way more iconic and way more dangerous than Thanos could ever be. Agreed. Darkseid, is, they are not capitalizing on it. They'll probably have a, a Steppenwolf. I think Steppenwolf, and they've already shown the mother box. If you watch the uh, ultimate cut of Batman vs Superman, they've already shown the mother box there. They've already shown the mother box in the uh, Comic Con trailer. Why would I go and be surprised in this film? I already know what this film is going to be. The only not necessarily be- being made now. for you, right? It's being made for a whole audience who don't read comics. That's a truth, man. No, you relate to no, it no, because you read this comic, right? The point I'm trying to make is that they're already putting in all of their eggs in one basket and giving it to you before <laughs> you go and watch the film. They've already shown the mother boxes is what I'm trying to say. They've already shown the only part they've not shown is Superman's return, which they will spoil in the first, in the second or the third page. I mean, it's basically being spoiled because you know that he is there in the other movie. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. The, yeah. So it's already there. So why would I go and waste waste 750 rupees to watch something which I already know is going, what is going to happen? I already know all of the beats of the movie. I don't know why I, I don't get it here. I really don't understand what DC are playing at. This is something which should be so easy to make and yet they are just faltering step after step after step. It, I, I just don't understand. So next up, last, uh, in the month of December, we have Soldado. We don't have a definite date for it. I think it will be out on the year most probably. Uh, so Anil. Yeah, uh, I'm one of the people who is who is very excited for Soldado and uh, it's, it's for a reason. If you've seen Sicario, you understand what I'm talking about. Sicario was that movie which is just in your face it's just very well written very crisply written and beautiful movie and the the thing is it's got most of the cast uh, coming back it's got Benicio Del Toro and Josh Brolin coming back but it doesn't have Emily Blunt but I don't think that's a bad thing because it's going to focus on Benicio Del Toro's uh, character who was sort of played an assassin in the movie and spoilers there but but uh, it's, it's going to focus on his character and then it's n- something that focuses on then what what people in what is have to face on an everyday basis so this turns out makes it very gritty in the real life because you know that this all of this can actually happen in real life so this movie is something that i'm really excited about it's been directed by stefano solima who is an uh, italian guy and he's, he's uh, not known for directing too many other movies apart from italian movies uh, one movie i i don't know if uh, you've heard of it it was called all cops are bastards. No, <laughs> that's a brilliant name for a movie, if I might. But, but it was uh, something that was uh, sort of got uh, very popular in Italy. Other than that, his, his track record is mostly based in the uh, in in Europe, and maybe this is something that he'll do justice to because he's more in tune with you know the whole mafia angle of things coming from Italy. I know it's a stereotype that I'm making, but I'm hoping that this is something that he'll do well. Okay, cool. And next up, we have another small movie by Walt Disney called Star Wars, which will hit us on 15th of December. So hopefully there isn't another SRK movie coming out there. So that will be, you know, like Force Awakens released a week after it was released in the US and we were bombed by spoilers. Hopefully that doesn't happen this time. Abhishek, going into Star Wars Episode 9. I have no expectations. (laughs) (laughs) That's the 
this is a movie which I've been waiting for since uh, Force Awakens ended uh, on the fateful day of 25th December at roughly 12.40 p.m. I've been waiting for episode 8 since then. Uh, and the all I could do was uh, read about more about Star Wars. I mean, watch all of the films again and again. I, I watched uh, the entire saga once a year, at least twi- twice a year uh, since then. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I can't even put this in words as to how excited I am for episode eight because about the implications which episodes um, about uh, uh, implications which uh, the events of episode seven have set up. I mean, obviously we know Carrie Fisher is no uh, no uh, no more, but you know, will her character survive episode eight is one big question. Will Luke Skywalker's character be a Jedi? Because here's a theory I have. My theory is that, that Luke Skywalker will not be a Jedi. He will not be a Sith because Siths are dead. Right? And what I think he'll be a great Jedi. A, a great Jedi for uh, if you uh, for the uninitiated is someone who has no affiliations with the Jedi of the old or with the Jedi Temple or with the Jedi Council. He channels his power with a combination of both the light and the dark. Someone someone like a Qui Gon Jinn who was a great Jedi. No matter what George Lucas tells you, Qui Gon Jinn was a dark Jedi, uh, was a great Jedi. Ahsoka Tano is a great Jedi. I think Luke Skywalker has faced so many losses in his life uh, that he would be channeling both the dark and the and the light. And I also have a theory that he is not going to survive uh, at the end of uh, episode uh, episode eight. So these are a couple of theories. I will come up with more as we, as we come nearer. We uh, we are also planning to have a full fledged Star Wars discussion. So let's see how that goes. So yeah, these are these are my two cents about Star Wars. It's, it's obviously directed by R- Ryan Johnson, someone who is very very capable when it comes to science fiction. If you wa- haven't watched Looper, you guys should check that out. He also comes. He is also very adept in dra- directing drama, as exemplified by some of his works in Breaking Bad. So and uh, yeah. The original cast returns, all all except uh, Harrison Ford, who was killed off. Spoilers alert at the end of Force Awakens. But yeah, so there you go. And also, we'll get to see the Knights of Ren, which is fucking cool. So, are you excited? I am definitely. I am excited for this movie. I no other movie franchise has the kind of character development and uh, the the linear storyline, you know, development that. Star Wars has and they thank God they, thank you that cannot be debated upon right it just does all these characters are well etched out and the history is very well written and this is documented all of this stuff and if it is not in the movies you, you bet your ass you can be found somewhere else and all of this makes for a very compelling read and you know you just become so engrossed in this universe that you know that if you're part of that universe you just can't wait for the next movie to come out. And this is what's happening right now. Abhishek is, is I, I know he's one of the big fans of Star Wars out there, Arindam included. And you, as Star Wars fans, you'll understand that you know, this is something that you will wait no matter what because you're so involved in this character. So you just want to know what happens next, right? And then yeah. I have one question to ask you though, before I... Uh, yeah. do, do you watch the prequels as well in your... Yes, yes. The entire saga, entire saga. I, I, I watch the prequels and then I watch uh, the, the original trilogy. Yeah, because... I have a theory on that. The th- thing is that they were not as bad movies as people say uh, they are. I mean, they are they bad. Were, they are bad. I'm not saying were. that. I'm saying that don't look at them as those movies that spoil the universe, right? Don't look at them. They are the movies that helped you put a base to all of, of the, the, the sequel movies that are there, right? If it was not for those movies, then a lot of those histories, as I said, it's a well-documented universe. But I would, I would disagree okay. to that point. You know why I would disagree to that point? Because uh, like Anandam would, would remind me time and time again in our everyday conversation that the extended universe is not canon anymore. But everything in the extended universe, most of the things have been adapted in the uh, in the prequels or in the cartoons like Rebels and Clone Wars and uh, The Clone Wars or yeah. are being, you know, being planned to uh, be adapted in the future movies as well. For example, in Rebels, you have this uh, amazing character called General Thrawn come uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn for that matter come uh, come into canon you had Darth Maul return spoiler alert by the way you had Darth Maul return you had all of these amazing characters come back which have already been established in the extended universe even the the, the workings of the inner workings of Coruscant the, the New Republic government that also has been documented in, in, you know, gone into length for that matter in the extended universe and these things have been adapted into the films. So I would disagree when you say that uh, these things have, uh, the prequels had a lot to do. Yeah, for the mainstream audience, yes, probably, but for hardcore Star Wars fans, yeah, I think these things were already established. There. And But you know, that's uh, why it's important, right? That's why it's important because most of the millennials are not big fans of the Star Wars universe. Oh, trust me, man, it's you just... have no idea. I, I mean, these guys, see, I put my love for Star Wars uh, as a 
and this is something which you can relate to as a love for heavy metal this is something yeah. which you go balls you know you yes. don't are you are not into star wars for just that time when the movie comes out you're into star wars you're into star wars for and that that thing will stay with you because every every sci-fi movie which comes out you will compare it to the epicness that is star wars that, that is what is, that's that's you but but for somebody who was born in the 90s who is not worse with star wars the star wars universe you know for them the prequel movies are the movies that actually he relates to i have i've seen people i, I mean i i most of my colleagues are young guys they younger than me so they're born in the 90s and these guys they actually will tell you that they like the prequel movies this is based on a, to quote, a personal to quote, survey yeah, personal to quote, survey that in, all, all you can do at the, in those scenarios you have to balance the force my friend bring <laughs> yeah, them the, to the light <laughs> but, but honestly the said that balance the force right i mean there were a lot of jedis and, and anakin did they said like you have to balance Sith, the force right? so yeah one one Sith, one jedi that's it balance they misread the entire thing about balancing the force yes. like when anakin would balance he actually he balanced did. It. thanks for listening to us if you missed any movies do let us know in the comments You can follow Indian Nerve on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Thanks to Anir and Abhishek for joining me earlier today. Goodbye.